What was your, oh shit, I'm the bad guy, moment? So when I was a neckbeard loser, I tried asking out this girl. She was hot but she was also in a wheelchair. I remember thinking how awesome it would be asking her out. Since I figured not too many dudes would put up with a woman in a wheelchair, she would be just so thankful for me because I'm such a good guy to look past her insecurities. So of course, I asked her out and she rejected me. At first, I was mad. I couldn't believe a lady in a wheelchair wouldn't go out with me. Like, who did she think she was? She couldn't even walk. But then, I realized I was being a jackass. I thought her being in a wheelchair would bring her down to my level but the truth was, she was still an awesome person that shouldn't be taking scraps just because she couldn't walk. I was the condescending prick who was looking looking down on her. It was a wake up call for myself and how I thought of women. It wasn't easy. Had to do some self reflecting. Found out I had no good qualities any lady wanted to date and had to work on myself. I'm not perfect. Still catch myself in toxic thought. But I'd like to think I've improved. Got a wife and she seems happy so there's that at least. I was in Tijuana drinking it up and this was in the 90s. I left a bar and when I made it outside, I realized that I left my wallet on the table. I went back in and saw that different people were there and no wallet. I asked them if they found a wallet and all said no. I got more aggressive with them and started to threaten them if they didn't return the wallet. I was a big guy in those days and I could tell they were scared. By this time, the bouncer is noticing and I recognize that I'd likely get thrown out soon. So I told them that I'd be waiting for them outside and would beat their asses. I went outside and was looking in to scare them and plus I was pissed. I then reached in my shirt pocket because I felt something there. Sure enough. My wallet was in there. Felt like such an ass and still feel like an ass when I think of it. This goes back to my first real girlfriend when we were 15. We were on and off for three years all throughout high school. She'd had a reputation for being crazy because she'd punched a boyfriend she had before me. All the brothers warned me not to date her. I did anyway. But, in true teenage douchebag fashion, we went through periods where I would hide our relationship because she was crazy and I didn't want to have a public relationship with her. In retrospect, she was an absolute sweetheart. Any crazy behavior from her was absolutely a reaction to how douchey guys treated her. 100% including me. She was a catch. I was an utter peanut butter and asshole sandwich to her. I still feel bad about it. We're still casual acquaintances today but I really don't know how to apologize for how I acted 20 years ago. I feel like the statute of limitations has expired and it would be super awkward now. A guy was following me down the highway as I left my college's parking lot night class and he kept honking, flashing his brights, and tailgating me so I gave him the finger about four separate ways. He pulled up next to me and I even mimed looking around inside my bag for something before pulling out a middle finger. I opened the glove box and pulled out a middle finger. I went all out. Guess whose headlights weren't on? I was out of town and I went into a frozen yogurt place I'd never seen before with so many flavors. I kept asking for sample cups until I'd tried like 20 of them and was only halfway. It was amazingly fun. I heard a parent giving a lecture to their kids who wanted to copy me about how we don't act like that man and buy hours that just ruined it for me. So I dropped a $10 in the tip jar and left. After being a bit of a tear away and trying to get my shit together in school I told off a kid for wearing a hat that the school uniform didn't allow. I later learned he was wearing the hat because he'd lost his hair to chemo. Did not feel good. When I was a kid there was this boy who would always bully me, and the first day of ninth grade he came in with a shaved head. I finally had easy ammo to get back at him, scoffed and called him Mr. Clean, Skinhead, etc etc. He died the next year from leukemia, I felt like a huge bitch. So, I was driving my car into a roundabout, doing nothing wrong, not cutting up any other drivers, driving at a safe, slow speed, and suddenly honk. From another driver, I look up and there is a taxi about to join the roundabout and the driver staring straight at me. For f sake, I think. These guys think they own the road. Now you're not even allowed to enter the roundabout when they want to. In my own deference, I was having a bad day so I did something I would never normally do. I slowed my car down to a crawl and gave him the finger, maintaining eye contact for several seconds. 
turning to look over my shoulder at him so as to keep up the finger and the eye contact for as long as possible. The look of astonishment on his face at getting the finger from this respectably dressed woman was priceless. As I exited the roundabout, honk, again, but this time I realized the sound had been from a commercial playing on the car radio. It must be tough, being a taxi driver. Some bastards kept pulling into my driveway to turn their car around and ripping up a huge chunk of my grass in the process. One day it's raining really hard and I back out of my driveway as usual, but I have to get out of my car to move the trash can. That's when I see my front wheel freshly covered in chunks of grass and mud, along with a huge tire track going straight from the torn grass in my yard to my front wheel. Turns out I'm the bastard who has been ripping up my own grass for like a year. It was a real sixth sense moment. Except no ghosts. Just grass ripping bastards. I was screaming at my nephew a lot when he did something bad. I realized I was flying off the handle when I didn't need to be. When a calm talk would work better and not upset him or make him feel so bad. And I realized it wasn't just that he was being super super bad. Just a bit naughty and kids aren't robots. I haven't screamed since the night I realized it and while I may raise my voice I keep that to a minimum and collect myself and calmly discuss things with him as much as possible. I still feel really guilty but I'm trying to be better to him and so far it's been going well. I blew a tic-tac through a straw into an old guy's face who was working at a car park booth when I was about 12 and still feel terrible about it a decade and a half later. I blew the paper off a straw right into the back of some guy's head at a restaurant when I was younger. Everyone at his table looked very shocked and appalled until they saw my own shocked and contrite face. I wasn't expecting the paper to even fly off the straw, let alone fly that far. Then I looked over at my own family where my dad was shaking his head at me in mock disappointment. My dad who was a beyond respectable looking European born college professor. The kind of guy who wears suits at home, very upright dignified, almost 19th century bearing, also had a completely wicked, dry, bizarre, Slavic sense of humor. We were in a fancy steakhouse and he was fiddling with the wine cork, placing it neatly on the handle of his fork, and then, without changing his very dignified expression, he brought his fist down on the tine, sending the cork sailing across the room, where it hit someone. My dad looked in guileless astonishment at the rest of us. Who would do such a thing? No one ever could even imagine that the distinguished gentleman with the handlebar moustache in the corner booth would have done it. Oh my god he was such a character. How I miss him. I went to the movies with some friends when I was 13. Instead of US being the typical annoying loud teenagers. There were some loud women sitting in the row ahead. I didn't hear the women, but my friend pointed them out and complained to me. In retaliation, I threw a handful of popcorn at the women and cackled like a madwoman. Turns out I misread where my friend was pointing, and I didn't hit the annoying loud women. I hit two quiet old ladies. I felt like such an asshole. One time I got pissed because I overheard my parents who adopted me talking about going on a trip to the beach. They both knew I had never been, told my mom how disappointed and pissed I was. Turns out they were planning a surprise trip for me to go to the beach. I felt so bad. I was part of a night raid in Afghanistan and the targets we were seeking left the site just before we got there. We blew the gate and shotgunned the doors and found that all the adults were gone, but had left their kids behind. Our standard operating procedure was to leave one soldier in each room as we initially cleared our way through the compound, which allowed us to move fast but not get surprised later if someone popped out of a hidey hole or something. That particular night I was stationed in this room with two little kids probably four and six. There was a little light, but not much. They were understandably crying and being really loud, and I felt bad for them. I used to carry extra food in my leg pocket and I fished out some cookies and tried to hand them to the kids. The way they freaked out when I reached toward them, I thought those kids were going to succeed in climbing straight up the wall. The screaming was out of this world. Only then did I consider that I could see clearly because of my night vision devices. But to them I was just a large, scary looking monster in the dark, with antennas and glowing green eyes and black balaclava with all sort of crazy stuff mounted on my head and covered in gear. While I knew these were cookies in a foil packet it probably didn't look like anything they would identify as food. It occurred to me that those kids would probably need therapy for a long time, and it was unlikely they would ever get it. Edited for clarity.
Heard someone calling my friend Richard Dick without knowing Dick was a nickname so I got all defensive. Then I realized I was being a jackass. I teach middle school, so I end up having to play the villain a lot. But one time stands out where I actually was the bad guy. Last block of the day, we're working through something that is not terribly interesting. I hear a few whispers and giggles and my teacher sense goes off. Out of the corner of my eye I see that a note is being passed around the class and that's what's causing the distraction. I muster up my best stern teacher face and boom put that in your backpack or I'm going to have to take it. Someone had found out it was my birthday, they made me a lovely card and were all signing it. If you're a teacher whose students actually pass a card around to sign consider yourself absolutely stellar. In all my school years I never once witnessed anything like this. In middle and high school I was a sort of proto-insul. Before that was even really a thing mid to late 1990s. I had never had a GF and I was convinced that there was some kind of conspiracy because girls didn't like me. I was super attracted to this one girl in particular. But in true insul fashion I never actually spoke to her. I simply got more and more frustrated over time. Let's call her Kara. Anyway, out of the blue one day her less attractive best friend and I struck up a conversation. And I saw it as an opportunity. Let's call her Tina. Tina and I developed a legitimate relationship, but in my mind I would always end up with Kara eventually. Tina was obviously head over heels for me, but I just used her to stay close to Kara. At some point in all this, Kara did eventually get a BF and I was crushed. I was so angry. I broke up with Tina shortly after Valentine's Day, no less. It wasn't until a few months later, when I was cleaning out all the notes Tina had sent me, that I realized what a massive ass I had been. Tina went on to find a much better man than myself, and I learned some valuable lessons. I'm grateful too, because that incident made me reevaluate myself and my approach to women. There is an alternate universe where I am single and on Reddit, bitching about Stacy instead of treating women like actual people and not just trophies to be won.